The Hawk, the Hound, and the Butterfly. Chapter 6 Athena. The physician told Athena she was lucky to be alive. If her helm had not been so strong, the crows would be feasting on her remains tonight. She'd told him luck had nothing to do with it. Luck was for those who had no skills of worth and the brains to match. The physician had disappeared after that. He'd left Athena in the hands of one of the healers, who stitched up her head without any of the meaningless chatter, thankfully. They'd applied a cool salve that melted into the wound and covered it in a thin layer of tender skin. The healer had given a small bottle of it to Athena, and told her to apply it twice daily. Athena took it to stop her talking. The sun had disappeared into the ground when Athena stepped out of the infirmary. A cool chill in the air blew across her face. The city was much quieter than it had been a few hours earlier, but there was one place that would be full of life and noise, and that was where Athena would find her last member of her rescue party. Athena turned the corner, leaving the merchant shops behind, and was hit with the ruckus billowing down the street from an old wooden building. Antlers sprung from above the doorway with a creaking sign that read, The Golden Stag. Athena put her hand against the door to enter, but a rumbling came from behind it. She quickly stepped aside as a man tumbled out through the doors and vomited into the middle of the street. Athena turned away. This was not how she wanted to spend the night before setting out on a mission, but she also didn't want to be alone with Apollo on that mission. Athena exhaled and stepped inside. Athena's head was thumping. To her left, a group who Athena wouldn't go so far as to call the musicians were on a small stage. One had a lute, another was spitting into a pipe, and one in the back was whacking a drum to the beat of a different song to the others. Regardless, they still had a small group of people who were singing along at the tops of their voices. An array of people in different stages of drunkenness sat along the bar that ran the length of the room on the right. Throughout the middle were tables hidden amongst yelling, drinking and fools doing what they do best. Only the lowest of the low would find themselves here on a night like this. Then Athena spotted a swarm of women around a table in the back. Athena elbowed her way through the crowd. Hey sweetheart, you look like you need a drink. A drunk blocked Athena's path. His breath was worse than the gases that emanated from the back of the horse stalls, and he swayed side to side like he was out at sea. Get out of my way before you get hurt, Athena said. The drunk tilted his head, frowning. He squinted at her, oblivious as to why his charm wasn't working. Ah, don't be like that. The drunk attempted to put his hand on Athena's shoulder. She grabbed it and twisted his wrist. The drunk cried out. Athena let go and shoved his hand back towards him. Go home, you fool, or next time I'll break it. The drunk cradled his wrist to his chest and glared at Athena as he skulked away. Athena continued her way through the crowd, which now seemed to part freely for her. Athena approached the table the women stood around, and there I was. A man's voice came from somewhere within the pack of crowded women. Five monstrous men, the size of houses, ready to pounce on me at the slightest movement. Athena searched for the owner of the voice through the heads of long, fluffy hair. Oh my, five of them? A woman with auburn hair to the right said. She looked like a fish with her lips pushed out and cheeks sucked in. What? Five? No, 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 darling. You misheard. It was ten. Athena found an opening. She wedged herself in between a broad-shouldered woman with an Adam's apple, wearing a velvet green dress, and a charcoal-haired woman with long, fluttering eyelashes. There were ten. Ten monstrous men, the size of houses, riding horses from the darkest depths of the underworld. The man sat back with his feet perched up on the table. He ran his hand through his thick brown hair, flashing his sky-blue eyes at the woman who'd questioned him. As he spoke, he waved his hands around like he was reciting an incantation that did seem to be sending all those surrounding him into a trance. Athena waved at him to try and get his attention. Get in line, 
the charcoal-haired woman beside Athena said. She shouldered Athena behind her. Oh, you are so brave, she said to the man, fluttering her eyelashes. Well, in situations like that, someone's got to be, said the man. Athena huffed. The man looked up and spotted her. The smile on his face dropped. He took his feet from the table and sat up straight. Uh, anyway, the man said, looking back at his adoring crowd. As I was saying, there was just one of me and thirty of them. Thirty? asked a woman with strawberry blonde curls that bobbed as she tilted her head side to side. Yes, darling, remember, they were riding horses, the man said, winking at the woman. Her face turned the same shade as a ripe tomato. Oh, of course, the woman giggled. Athena rolled her eyes. The more time she spent in this place, the more her head was hurting. And so, I took up my spear, the man said, standing up and raising his right arm with an imaginary spear, drew it back, and I wept like a little boy until they took pity on you and left, Athena interrupted. She stared at him with a smirk on her face. The crowd all turned to see who had said such nonsense, gasping and whispering to each other. We need to talk, Athena said. Brother. Ares sighed. Well, my beauties, it seems my sister has come to ruin our night. I'll have to tell you how that story really ended another time. The group let out a collective sigh. Athena ignored the dirty looks some of them shot at her. Ares got up from the table. Good night, ladies. He smiled at the woman with the strawberry blonde curls. She turned to a friend, and they started giggling like idiots. The woman with the charcoal black hair came up to Ares and planted a kiss on his cheek. She whispered something into his ear, then sauntered off. Athena groaned under her breath. She rubbed the throbbing wound on her head. Come on, she said, gripping Ares by the arm and dragging him away from the rabble. Ares had been the first person Athena had asked to be part of her winged guardians. They'd grown up training together, always trying to outdo the other. Whilst Athena had always bested him with the sword, Ares was exceptionally accurate with the spear, and he knew it too. He had declined her offer, but she knew he would. They were partners, and whilst he'd always follow whatever she said to do, taking orders from your sister was apparently not good for one's image. What talent Ares had with a spear was far exceeded by his ability to attract women. Ares had been blessed by the gods with a jawline that could break iron and a face that could weaken the knees. It was what made so many women, and some men, all across Arcadia, adore him. But it was his charm and wit that broke their hearts. As easily as Athena could disarm a man in combat, Ares could a pretty girl of her virtues. Athena found a booth in a somewhat quiet corner of the tavern. As she sat down, the seat made a squelching sound. The small corner of the tavern had a strong stench of musty wine, but Athena suspected that wasn't the only reason that her hands stuck to the tabletop. So, Ares said as he slipped into the seat across from Athena, what brings you down to the slums? Keen for a rowdy night out? Don't know if you'll get many offers looking like that. Ares eyed the wound on Athena's head. Her hair had been parted and slicked back where the salve had been applied. She hadn't cared enough to try and hide it. I am older and bigger than you. I can hurt you, Athena said. Uglier too, but then again, we can't all be this perfect. Ares rubbed the scruff on his chin. His eyes wandered off, like they tended to when something more appealing was happening somewhere else. Athena thumped her fist on the table. You need to listen to me. Ares yawned. He turned back to Athena, resting his head in his hands. I need you to come on a mission with me. A mission? Ares raised an eyebrow. Where would this mission be taking us? Athena leaned forward. Ares copied her. To Medina. What? Ares said. Several people turned to see what the commotion was about. Their eyes narrowed on Athena and Ares. Ares started laughing. He slapped the table. Oh, Athena, the women of Arcus would freeze if I weren't there to keep them warm every night. His voice was loud enough that the eavesdroppers shook their heads and turned back to what they were doing. A few women called out in agreement. The woman with charcoal black hair sauntered up to the booth. She placed a mug of beer in front of Ares. Bottoms up, she said, 
Smiling like a Cheshire cat, Ares winked at her. Thanks very much, he said, turning back to Athena. The charcoal-haired woman pressed her lips together. She shot a glare at Athena and walked away. Why would I want to go into Tekken territory? All their women are scraggly old wenches. That never stopped you before. That's true. Are we going to visit your boyfriend? What's his name? Dragnar? Dagmus? Dagar. And he is not my boyfriend. Ares smiled and took a sip from the mug. Will you just stop for two minutes? Ares held up his hands and placed them over his mouth. Artemis has been kidnapped, along with many others. Ares' hands fell away, as had the smile. Artemis? Our little sister Artemis? How could this have happened? Athena knew how it had happened, and the reason was supposed to be coming with them. She was out in the woods with Apollo. Athena spat his name out like it left a bad taste in her mouth. Some kind of orb, thing, took her. One of the creator's doings, no doubt. So, are you with me? Ares sighed. You know I'm always with you, Athena, especially when family's involved. When do we leave? Tomorrow, at dawn. We'll meet you at the stables. We? Ares raised an eyebrow and took a sip from the mug. Athena sighed. The little prince is coming with us. Ares choked on his drink. He coughed until his throat was clear. Apollo, he's coming with us? Yes, unfortunately. You'll have to keep an eye on him. Luckily I have two eyes, because I'll have to keep one on you as well. Just don't be late. Athena stood up from the table. Or turn up drunk. I don't want to have to go through another experience, like that time in Sandema. Ares drained the mug and slapped it on the table. Ah yes, Sandema. Beautiful wines, beautiful people. Ares walked beside Athena as she headed for the door. I can't say I won't, but I can say I'll try. Athena shook her head. She left Ares as he wandered towards the bar, and his flock returned to his side. Athena was glad to escape the stench of the golden stag. The noise faded as she headed back up the road towards her lodgings. There was plenty to do before the morning, and no doubt she would have to do it all. It was late, the streets were dark, and if they weren't at the stag, everyone would be in their homes asleep, so Athena wondered who could be following her. A lamplight cast their shadow onto the door of the tailor's shop front. Their body was stretched, limbs long like a spider's legs. They kept close to the buildings, trying to stay hidden behind barrels and shop front awnings. They kept a steady pace behind Athena, just far enough that she couldn't hear how hard their feet hit the cobblestones. Athena didn't have her sword on her. After throwing the Tekken armor she'd borrowed into the river, and collecting her armour and sword from its hiding place, they both needed a polish, and her sword needed sharpening. But she did have her newly acquired dagger still strapped to the inside of her boot. Athena ducked into an alleyway. She pulled the dagger from her boot, and pressed her back against the wall. She slowed her breathing, making it calm and steady, but her muscles tensed with anticipation. The shadowy figure emerged. Athena swooped on them. She held the dagger to their throat, and pushed the person into the moonlit street. Arkan, Athena said, deflating like a balloon. Captain, Arkan nodded, as Athena pulled away from him and shined the blade against her sleeve. What are you hiding in the shadows for? Just seeing if you'd lost your touch. I could sense you from the butchers. Well, then you are. I saw you come out of the stag. Athena huffed. The fumes from the tavern must have dulled her senses. She wouldn't let it happen again. What do you want, Arkan? Athena continued up the street. I thought you'd like to know your warriors got back, although not everyone is in one piece. Garros has a nasty gash across his chest that needed to be stitched up. Is everyone still alive? More or less. Then good. I knew I could rely on you, Arkan. Always, Arkan said. He always emphasized his S's, hissing like a snake. Why did you run off? What did you find? Was there Arkan? Athena held up her hand. I have a mission to do. The king and his council will hold a meeting tomorrow. You'll represent us and find all the answers to your questions. Arkan's eyes narrowed. All right then, he nodded. When the men are rested, you're to put them through their routines till I get back. Understood? Understood. Good. Do well, Arkan. And maybe you'll have your own men to command one day. One day, Arkan smiled. 
The look in his eyes suggested he was thinking something that he wasn't saying. Athena noticed, but ignored it. She had too much to worry about already. Arkin took his leave, and Athena continued up the path alone. She was glad of the silence. It'd be the last she'd have of it for the next few days.